All right, folks, we're going to take a look at page 41, number 28D. So they're asking us to prove this identity. So step one is to determine what side to start with. And it doesn't look like the right-hand side offers much uh, opportunity to uh, manipulate uh, other than turning this into 1 minus sine squared and 1 minus sine squared uh, for y. I don't see how that's going to help me get to the left-hand side, whereas the left-hand side does offer lots of opportunities because we've got our compound angle formulas. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side here, okay, and not much choice. So I'm just going to apply my um, uh, compound angle formula for cos of a sum, all right? So that's uh, cos of the first times cos of the second, okay? And remember, for cosine, the operation is opposite, so minus sine of the first, sine of the second, okay? And similarly for uh, the other compound angle formula, it's going to be cos of the first, Cos of the second, this time plus sine of the first times sine of the second. So not much to do within these two brackets. So it looks like our only uh, option is to distribute these two binomials. All right, but what's nice about it is I notice that this is going to produce a difference of squares because it's the exact same terms, just with a subtraction addition. We know that that produces a difference of squares. So it's just a matter of multiplying the first two terms and the last two terms. So that's going to give me cos squared x, cos squared y, and then minus, multiplying these two, sine squared x, sine squared y. All right, so now this is where I'm going to take a look at the right-hand side for a bit of inspiration. I notice that there's only cosines on that right-hand side. So it makes sense to take these sine squareds and use the Pythagorean identity to turn them into cosine expressions. So this is cos squared x cos squared y. I'm not going to change that, but I will change this into 1 minus cos squared x and this into 1 minus cos squared y. Okay, and so now at the very least I've got everything in terms of the same expressions as I have on the right hand side. So here I don't really see anything else but to distribute these two binomials. Okay, so I'll leave this here, cos squared x, cos squared y. I won't touch that yet. Now here, when I do this multiplication, please do not forget to open up your brackets. Better to do that and in two steps um, determine the simplification than to try to keep track of this negative as you go along. Okay, so let's multiply these two. So we have 1, okay, and then we've got minus cos squared x, and then we've got minus cos squared y. And then lastly, we've got plus cos squared x, cos squared y. All right. And now when we take a look at this, keeping in mind that we've got this subtraction in front, we realize that we have cos squared x, cos squared y minus cos squared x, cos squared y. So that's nice because we don't see that in our uh, right-hand side. And here again, keeping track of this negative. Well, hey, look what I have, a positive cos squared x. Here we have a positive cos squared y, and then here we've got a minus 1, which is exactly what we have on our right-hand side. Okay, and so our identity is proved. Okay, so just to recap here, uh, I first recognize that the left-hand side offers more uh, hope for manipulation. Okay, I do really the only thing I can do, which is apply the um, uh, compound angle formulas. I save myself a lot of time by noticing that this is going to produce a difference of squares. And then finally, I notice that the right-hand side has no cosine, uh, sorry, has no sine expressions. So that's why I use my Pythagorean identity to change these into cosine expressions. And then the rest is just about being careful uh, with the algebra. Okay, that's it for this one.